Hello everyone, I am Chen Yusheng. I am now Executive Secretary at the Fine Arts Education Resource Center of the Ministry of Education. This unit that we are about to begin is New Media and Digital Design. In this unit, I will explain to you what sort of thing the relationship related to design and new media is. Then, I will teach you how to use the 3D drawing software SketchUp. Later, we will use some different forms of output like 3D printers and laser cutters to have each of you carry out a social design. So, I am sure that you will learn a lot in this unit. Let's get started. Let's go. Now, let's start the new media and digital design unit. Before we begin this unit, I want to show you the outline of our course. First, we will start with a theoretical introduction to new media and digital design. We'll learn what design is and its connection with new media art. Next, through a practical lesson, including student investigations of their nearby communities, we will use the concept of social design to make designs. After this, we will learn to use the 3D drawing program called SketchUp, so each of you can learn its use. Then, we will use some output interfaces, for instance, 3D printers and laser cutters, to print the designs you have created. Now, we will begin our introduction to new media and digital design. Now, we will explain to you the concept of design. What is the concept of design? We can start with etymology. Design is an English word. From an etymological perspective, the word design can be traced back to designo, an Italian word from the time of the Renaissance. Then, what does designo mean? Actually, the word designo can be found in many of da Vinci's manuscripts. Designo at that time actually meant to sketch which isn't quite the same as design as we now understand it, right? Actually, during the Renaissance, there was not that big of a divide between design and pure art. So, designo actually refers to an artist working on sketches. This type of action, when finished, actually, it already has some thought behind it. Everyone, from this etching by Pietro Francesco Alberti, Accademia di Pittori, we can see what some art students would actually learn at that time. Actually, in this etching, we can see that these students didn't just learn the ability to depict things in the outside world in sketches. They also had to work on shaping and learn geometry, including tasks like architectural design. So, at the time, artists actually were adept at designing task orientations. So, actually, at the time, many artists were very versatile. For example, this artist that I am about to introduce to you, was from the Northern Renaissance. He is a very important artist called Albrecht Dürer. In addition to being very good at painting and making a great number of self-portraits, Dürer was actually a great designer. Why? Because he published a book called A Course in the Art of Measurement with Compass and Ruler. In this book, Dürer employs many geometric principles, such as how to use forms to compose shapes to design letters. You can see that back then, actually, a lot of artists were very skilled in many aspects of the humanities and natural sciences. Additionally, at the peak of the Renaissance, there was a very famous artist that everyone knows, Leonardo da Vinci. In addition to being a very skilled painter, you might not know that da Vinci himself was very good at design. Why is this? Actually, at the time in Italy, there were many lords that ruled over different regions. Da Vinci needed to support himself, so he actually often had some design drafts to give to lords. He would tell them that if they built it, it would be a powerful weapon of war, or that it's some kind of engineering production. He would explain to them these design plans. So actually, from his manuscripts, you can see that da Vinci had a lot of great inventions and designs. So, da Vinci didn't think of himself as an artist only good at portraying the external world. Through sketches, he actually often worked for the purpose of creative thinking and design. So, if you actually look at the Renaissance, there were many artists that were actually very skilled designers themselves. Next, I will explain why between modern design and pure art, there began to be a clearer division. In fact, this started with the Industrial Revolution. 
What influence did the Industrial Revolution have on art and design? We all know that the Industrial Revolution was a very long process. In fact, there were a lot of machines, including steam engines and textile machines, that were being created. In fact, under this influence, there was a very big change. Large numbers of industrially manufactured products could now be produced. Under these circumstances, traditional art and design, which entirely used manual production methods, were met with a great impact. In fact, countries influenced by the Industrial Revolution hoped to interact with each other to demonstrate their national strength, art, and industrial products. Because of this, the World Expo began. The first World Expo was held in Hyde Park, London, England. The exhibition venue was the very well-known Crystal Palace. The Crystal Palace was created by a very well-known architect, Joseph Paxton. Actually, at first, he wasn't an architect, but a horticultural designer. What materials were used in the construction of the huge and magnificent Crystal Palace? Very modern industrial metal and large amounts of glass. In fact, in this World Expo, each country displayed its industrial productions and art through much effort, but after the exhibition, each country started to reflect on the question, why is it that all of these industrial products that were created seem to lack beauty? So after returning home, they all reflected on this deeply, including Britain, France, and Germany. In fact, this had an impact on many artists. For example, the famous leader of the art and industrial movement, the well-known artist and designer William Morris. At the time when William Morris saw mass-produced industrial products, he felt very disgusted. Because we know that at the time, industrial technologies were not very well developed, so the products that were manufactured were still a bit crude. Their shapes were not very smooth. So William Morris emphasized that we should return to the style of handmade manufacturing of the Middle Ages and use curves and natural shapes. So this sort of design was actually very different from the industrial products of the time that emphasized lines that were horizontal and vertical. So, later... After this movement, Art Nouveau was born. Art Nouveau is a style that followed the arts and crafts movement and valued curves and the beauty of plants, and influenced many artists and designers of the time. But after this, there was another artistic movement and style called Art Deco. Actually, Art Deco, a type of decorative art, no longer held that art and design had to be contrary to industrial technology. It basically used a lot of geometric lines and forms. Mass manufactured products like industrial products or industrial technology were trying to integrate aesthetics. So actually in this process, we can see that design and art gradually separated into different divisions of art history or design history. So actually the industrial revolution had a very big impact. And then, as art and design began to be differentiated, a very unique school was established in Germany. It had a huge impact on modern design. The very famous Bauhaus. Bauhaus itself was founded by its principal, the architect Walter Gropius. Bauhaus's ideal was actually Gropius's ideal. He hoped that through architecture, the concept of cladding would allow the creation of a good fusion of pure art and design. So at the time, Bauhaus had a very unique system of study. Many of the teachers at Bauhaus weren't just artists. They were actually also really amazing designers. For instance, Wassily Kandinsky, Paul Klee, and Mahali Nagy, who later had a profound influence on modern art. Actually, even Kandinsky himself actually had a background in music. He also studied law. So why would he enter the world of painting? Actually, he was a very strict teacher. In his paintings, we know that Kandinsky was actually a pioneer of modern abstract painting. In fact, his paintings didn't portray real objects from the external world. Instead, he used points, lines, and planes to make forms and create paintings similar to music composed of notes and rhythms. So actually, in his head, it was a style that had a very formal composition. So actually, students at Bauhaus and its future students had a very famous design teacher named Marcel Breuer. At the time, Breuer also designed a very classic chair. He used large amounts of industrially manufactured components to design the chair. Actually, we can see that this chair, including its armrest, seat, and other components, was entirely made of metal rods. People knew how to make chairs before this. Chairs were often handmade and refined and took a lot of time to make. 
However, these kinds of products, like Brewer's Chair, actually have a modern beauty, and they can be manufactured in large quantities. So actually, Bauhaus's philosophy, whether through teachers or students, achieved an integration of technology and art, and made a very big contribution. There was also a very famous art and design teacher at Bauhaus named Mahali Nagy. Mahali Nagy actually really liked to use new media. He also really liked photography. He had a mechanical work that was also very famous called Light Display, Black, White, Gray. In fact, we can see in this recording that Mohali Nagy actually used some mirrors and powered devices and some complex objects he created to make each object create a rhythm of shadow and light in this dynamic process. So you can see that the teachers at Bauhaus were in fact coming to terms with the technological evolution brought about by the Industrial Revolution, as well as new forms and materials. They were very liberal in their use of these things. Whether it's artistic creation or design, they all show this quality. Because Mahali Nagy, while working at Bauhaus, was persecuted by the Nazis, he later moved to the United States and started the Black Mountain College. In fact, this school is the ancestor of modern design colleges. We can see the Bauhaus had a great influence on modern design. So actually, the Industrial Revolution's great impact on design has been a very long process that is ongoing to the present. We all know that we split the Industrial Revolution into three, the first, the second, and the third. The first industrial revolution, we can say, included the use of steam engines and textile machines. Mass-produced products appeared. The second industrial revolution saw the creation of information technologies and the massive transmission of information. In today's third industrial revolution, there's been a so-called digital revolution. That is to say, through computers and the continuous technological evolution of the digital revolution, whether it's design or artistic creation, in new media, we say that digital media on an artistic level is already a media that many artists can use. For instance, AI, online art, and so on. As for design, there are the output interfaces we just mentioned, like 3D printers, laser cutters, and so on. Actually, these all have greatly impacted design. We can say that they support many aspects of modern design. It can be used to make more individual and more varieties of design work. Now that we understand the relationship between design and new media, through the concept of social design, we will give you a more practical lesson. First of all, what is social design? We already understand that the imagined audience of modern design is very large. That is to say, it wants to produce the most benefit. So all products and designs are all created for the largest of groups. But in fact, this kind of design has produced some problems in modern times. For example, we know that in the composition of modern society, there are different groups based on gender, class, and race. And in these things, actually, some groups that are relatively small might be ignored in design. So we say social design. Social design as a concept hopes to make design take on a socially responsible role and through design remedy some problems or help some groups that have been neglected in society. It hopes that design can take the role of reforming society. So, actually in Germany, the International Design Forum recommends that social design start from a few specific areas. For instance, to eradicate poverty or help people obtain a better education, or more basic things like getting clean water or resources. Actually, you might discover that social design can be used in many areas. So now our class will use social design as a concept. This way each of you can look in the communities around you to see if there's anything that we can use design to change. You can see if there is anything, whether material or non-material, that can through design change users or change the social environment to make a contribution to design. Now we will use a few cases to demonstrate to you how some designers have used the concept of social design to create some works of design. Next, we'll look at some examples of social design. The first designer that we'll look at is Evan Gant. Evan Gant, through a very low-cost design, he made a vertical water pipe that hangs from a wall. 
plastic water bottles can be attached to this pipe at a slant. This type of design can collect rainwater to be reused. So this rainwater that is collected in the bottles can be used to water plants or wash hands. You might think that such a design isn't very special, but in some developing countries, for instance, some places where water isn't readily available, this kind of design can help local residents or users to recollect some water. So for resource poor regions, such a low cost design is actually a very good example of social design. Next, we're going to look at the designer Paul Coxedge. Paul Coxedge is a British artist. He designed a very large bench called Please Be Seated for a London design festival. From this image, you can see that this seat is very large. It is made of an extremely curved wooden surface and has a very beautiful form. And this kind of design can easily allow users to come and go, whether they are sitting or standing or walking through the walkways. It creates a kind of constantly changing individual behavior. Actually, through this design, we might think social design can be thought about from a material perspective and from a non-material perspective. What this means is you can think about how your design will bring about changes in behavior or interactions between people. So social design can be widely applied in many aspects. The third case we're going to examine is the famous domestic design team, Agua Design. Agua Design has been commissioned by the Taipei City government to create an aesthetic design for Taipei City sanitation workers and produce a functional transformation. Agua Design considers how sanitation workers work very hard for the sake of our environment, but nobody has thought about the equipment that they use. Sometimes their equipment really isn't functional or it isn't very aesthetic. So Agua Design used design thinking to make some changes to their uniforms and equipment. They wanted to make it more convenient for the sanitation workers to use the equipment while working, as well as improve the aesthetic identity and character of sanitation work. So you can all see that in social design, whether looking at users in society that have been neglected or different groups, you can think about design through material and non-material behaviors. Through the perspective from which we design, we can change the world. Now that you all understand the concept of social design, we will now implement what you've learned. We will ask each of you to go to a neighborhood near you and think about what areas or environments you think might be improved through the perspective of social design. That is our goal. So we will guide you through using a free application called Google Street View. Google Street View can allow you to clearly express exactly which area you want to improve and what kind of environmental changes you want to make while collecting survey data and investigating. So now we will show you how to use this program. After you understand the program, we will have you enter the community. What's most important is that you need to think about which areas you are unsatisfied with or which areas you think to users are really irrational or have an uncomfortable environment. Actually, you need to especially think about how to create a better social design by making a change. Let's take a look at this Google Street View that we are using. After opening this app, we can see in the lower right corner an image of a camera. Let's click it. Three selections will appear, and we select Take Photosphere at the bottom. Next, you can see that the screen wants you to turn on your camera. Click Accept. Now you can see that because we are shooting this new media online course now, I'll use our set as an example. We can see that there's a dot in the middle. After we align the dot and wait for it to process, four other dots will appear. We just keep going and line up the other dots. Some of the dots might take a little more time to line up accurately. While aligning the dots, we can see the 360 degree picture slowly come together.
Can you see the entire set of the new media course we are shooting? So you can use this tool while you are investigating your community environment to take a 360 degree picture of the area that you wish to improve through social design. When the time comes, each of you can share the problems you discovered in your environment or areas. Then you can share how you want to use design to make a social design improvement. Because this process is relatively long, we are now using the example of the above case to let everyone see how to take a 360-degree photo. After you take care of all the gray areas, then a 360-degree photo will appear. There might be a lot of gray areas. We might need a little time to make some adjustments. Maybe we can speed up playback. If it's pretty much complete, we just hit this check mark. Now we can see at the bottom, there's already a 360 degree photo of our set. Now actually this image can be shared to the cloud. You can see at the top that it's processing. After you press this, you can see something really interesting on the screen of this phone. Our entire new media set has had its picture taken. How do we publish it? Actually, the share function is in the bottom right. You can share privately and you can share to any of your drives or the cloud. Now everyone understands how to use this type of software. I hope that when you are investigating your community, you can use this kind of tool. Additionally, we will use images like these in SketchUp 3D drawing software later to create a new media background image. While you are investigating your communities, you can start from several aspects. For example, you can look for groups that have been neglected in society. From a perspective sympathetic to them, you can think about how to use design to give different user groups a better using environment. You can think about, for example, gender or race. For example, from the perspective of gender, Professor Bi Hung Da of NTU's Institute of Building and Planning used design thinking to ameliorate some of the spatial power differentials that are created by gender. Actually, I hope that while investigating your communities, you can be as detailed as possible. No matter whether you are taking photos or writing records of your observations, investigate in as much detail as possible the different areas that would be affected in the current state of different environments by the objects within them. So the more detailed your investigation is, the more ideas you will have about how to use social design to plan and implement improvements. I look forward to seeing the results of your investigations. 
In this unit, we explain to you the relationship between design and new art media. Next time, we will use a 3D modeling program, SketchUp, to show you how you can produce your social design thinking and ideas through 3D drawing. Okay, see you next time.